Welcome back to Stompy 51's Miniature Adventures. Today we're going to be having a look at the Chaos Dwarfs I've painted for Blood Bowl over about the last two decades, as well as unboxing some Gaspers Arts Chaos Dwarf Blood Bowl miniatures, which I got in a Kickstarter a long time ago, maybe more than five years ago, and have still failed to paint, and I'm likely to pass on, but might as well share with all of you before I do. I mean, who needs two Chaos Dwarf Blood Bowl teams? Now, I've always been quite inspired and found very entertaining the Babylonian Persian kind of background to the tall hatted Chaos Dwarves. And whenever I play with them, I always have at the forefront of my mind that Shelley poem, you know, which says, uh, as the poet was meandering along in an antique land, he sees uh, on a pedestal of the statue, these words, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look at my works, ye mighty, and despair, but basically, nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sand stretch far away, i.e., these guys thought that they were something, but after time, their enormity is just gone in the sand, which basically reflects the extent of my blood bowl glory, and largely failures. And here is my Ozymandias, my king of kings, Shah and Shah, painted in blue and white armour with silver trimmings and a lot of royal gold dolloped in just for good measure, using, I didn't go wild painting the armour with my new kind of techniques, I just washed in a little bit of dirt where I think the muck of Blood Bowl would have ended with all that piling in and driving using a bit of bolt gun metal dabbed on with some packing material because surely this would chip if people smash into you a lot so he's a bull centaur and if an average human is moved six he's also moved six but he's got sure feet and sprint which means he can go for it one more time and re-roll the going for it, which I think he needs a two up on a d6 not to fall over. So he's got an effective movement of nine. Once you've given him the ball and he's got a clear ability to run down the line, he is very hard to stop, particularly if, like me, when I last played with this team in a league, they go up to strength five because they're strength four and an average human is strength three, so they become very hard to grab and pin down. And he was sculpted by one of my favourite sculptors of all time, Rafael Astumpo. Um, but I think he's supposed to be a star player, but I, I'm going to use him as a normal uh, bull centaur, because that's what the normal bull centaur, one of the first ones sculpted by Rafael Astumpo, looks like. One of my favourite sculptors. I mean, these were painted, ten, this was painted 10 years ago, that was painted about a year ago. Well, there's not been a lot of quantitative improvement in my general style, but hey, nothing wrong with that. And to give you a sense of scale, that's the Games Workshop uh, Bull Centaur. Again, painted quite some time ago. Oh, don't we all love those hats? Bull Centaur Mania. I think that'll have to be the photo that I put on the thumbnail. Or maybe it'll be a family shot. Anyway, I suppose now to the core of the family. Now there are supposed to be six of these little fellows and I'll have to go and search for the other one somewhere in the deep dank garage. But that guy actually is from some kind of rocket crew, Chaos Wolf rocket crew from back in the day when uh, in Warhammer Fantasy Battle they had a whole army of these guys and they go on eBay for huge crazy sums so I probably should just take this fellow and put him on eBay for about 20 quid but then again I painted him and so he's now like family. This is what the ones in the box looked like and I had another converted one, 
which I'll go and look for. But look at their little hat. I mean, that's a bent spike, but then again, it is Blood Bowl and big creatures are jumping on you all the time. They're a bit monopose, but in those days, I think that was all they could kind of cast. None of this dynamism stuff. Their job really is just to stand there and just take the pain. I don't know what possessed me to paint his ball half yellow and half pink. I must have been in a whimsical mood. So he was obviously carrying a shield and a sword. And it was a horrendous thing for me to, to do to, to face him like this. Because, again, I think on eBay these are very rare and go for like 20, 30 quid or something insane. But it was in the days before there were so many different Chaos Dwarf teams out there. You had to just kind of convert. I didn't want to have yet more standard uh, Chaos Dwarf blockers. And so I cut that, I cut up his hand and just put on this ball, possibly from a mace attached to a Chaos Warrior. Um, did a bit of green stuffing to put a kind of, I don't know what it's called, those things you wrap around your hand, like boxes around, them, around their hands. And then I, it was a, a, a raised bit at the back for a shield or a banner. And so I did some slightly dodgy green stuffing, which is broadly worked. It's all black to cover it up. And there you go. Star player, also by Rafael Astumpo. Also painted, I think, this one painted maybe about five, six years ago. I had a bit of fun doing some of the detail on there. The yellow and white uh, coloured uh, beard holders, I don't know what they're called. I mean, I don't remember him being terribly worthwhile as a star player. It's not Bombardier, but I can't remember what the rule was, but you basically can put the ball into this blunderbuss and you can fire it up the line. But if I remember rightly, it's a secret weapon and so he gets sent off at half time which made it not a good use of time. And you really just used him as an extra Chaos Dwarf blocker as long as you had him. Now the sneaky cousins, the slaves of the Chaos Dwarves. These are the Hobgoblins who I overused because the problem with the Dwarves is they only move four, so they can't really grab the ball and go anywhere. So, you, so I tended to, and I couldn't always get the ball to these guys. And these guys had kind of, you know, they're basically humans from what I recollect. So I would hand them the ball and they would dart in and about and they would start picking up skills, as you can see. But the problem is, is they would tend to die pretty easily because I think there were only armor seven, which is pretty low. Or on a scale of, I think they got up to armor 10, 11 for the top guys. They look quite fun. And then you can take a monster, which for the dwarves is this Minotaur. And he came out ages ago. And on eBay, again, I've seen him go for crazy money, like 70 quid, albeit unpainted. And then I've got a few bits and pieces I picked up from various Kickstarters. I might as well show, which I haven't got around to painting. So these are some metal reroll counters, which I don't think I'd go mad painting. I think I'd just paint them gold and give them a wash. They're pretty heavy. With the face of the Shah and Shah, Ozymandias himself. Three reroll counters. This is because, well, certainly in the old days, on a, um, a blood bowl pitch, Hold that pitch. Um, there wasn't enough space when your uh, Minotaur got knocked down to lay him down. So you could just, I could put down this marker to show he's stunned and that marker to show he's prone. Um, and you know, that one probably is worth more of a bit of an effort of painting when I get around to it one day. And what's that? Ah, well, I suppose you could use that as a team leader reroll.
Oh, Gus Bezards. Yes, I think, I can't remember if, I think Gus Bezards marketed all of these uh, Raphael Stumpo sculpts. And that's a stunned and prone marker for the bull centaurs. Now for a little bit of an unboxing of some Raphael Stumpo miniatures. There was a Kickstarter a few years ago for Chaos Dwarfs, and I don't know what got into my mind because I suppose I've already got a team. I don't really need two, but they were gorgeous sculpts. And so we must well do a little bit of an unboxing. So this would be a Minotaur with a prehensile tail. Oh, look at that gorgeous sculpting. You can give him a normal fist. Or you could give him claw. I give him claw. And there's the head. Look at the detail captured in that. There's the head. And some metal. Horns. Well, I'm inspired to make him up now. for when your bull gets upgraded, because he's not a very exciting looking bull compared to that. A project for the future. And then there are the... Oh, I probably am unboxing these. I never actually opened them. I mean, these are good chunky metal casts. And I suspect quite a lot bigger than the old style ones. Yeah, quite a lot, bit, quite a lot bigger. But look at that. He's got a proper big hat, and he's got a claw. And they're quite dynamic. Look at him; he's pushing his way forward. And these guys just doing their job. Well, that guy are kind of issuing orders. I'm not sure that the uh, Chaos Dwarves occupy a leadership role. But, you know, nothing wrong with being inspirational. I mean, aspirational. And this one also pushing his way forward. Put those back in. This one I think is from Grebo Games, and he, well, I wasn't sure what to do with him. I picked him up to be the Minotaur, because he is more in keeping with the kind of Persian feel, with the beard. And back in the day when the boards were smaller, the squares were smaller, he could fit into it quite neatly. And then we have a couple of bull centaurs from the Kickstarter. I think it might have been delivered by Gaspers Arts, but it was Rafael Astumpo having a go himself. Look at the terrifying look on his face. How does he measure against it? Quite a lot bigger than the old, the old one. Actually, I take that back. Slightly bigger, not hugely bigger. Impressive looking. And then the last one, who I think in the game is utterly useless, but it's worth fun doing, painting up just for fun. So I think if you manage to get what I think is a double roll for a skill for a Chaos Dwarf blocker, the last thing you do is give him two heads, which gives him plus one agility to dodging, because why do you really need to dodge them around? Well, I suppose it would get them into places that are unhelpful to your opponent. I mean, it's a different thing to do. And then you give them a claw. What's that? Extra large hands. So, I mean, he's not going to need to pick up the ball. 
It'd be bizarre to have a Chaos Dwarf running around, picking up the ball and dodging around when he's not likely to be able to move very far with it. Well, that's it from Ozymandias today. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Please do like the video, offer any comments if you have any thoughts, and subscribe, please, if you've been watching a few of these and uh, want to watch any more, or if you want to see what other huge Blood Bowl treasures are to come out from my garage. I, I basically spent about 10 years playing only Blood Bowl badly in a club that only played it. So uh, there's plenty more where these came from. Have a great evening or day and see you soon.